They say that everybody has a double. That somewhere in the world there's someone who looks and acts just like you. Sometimes this leads to minor complications, sometimes to embarrassment. But in this instance, it leads to the most dramatic moment in the lives of four people. Listen to the story of the prodigal son on Theater 5. <laughs> watching. They didn't think you'd make it. <laughs> Frankly, neither did I. Oh, you was lucky. There ain't another gas station between here and Rutland. You'd have got stuck in the mountains, then you'd have really been in trouble. Yeah, I'm lucky. Can you get this heat back in operation? Well, come on out, stretch your legs. I'll open the hood and look. Well, might as well. Say, say, I couldn't see you inside the car. You're Kenny. Kenny Brunner. Why, it must be four or five years since you've been home. I, I'm who? The name is Jack Robbins, and I, I've never been in this part of the country before. Oh, don't try kidding an old man, Kenny. I've known you since you was a baby. Say, your pa sure welcome the sight of you. Look, mister, it's late. I'm tired. I don't know what you're talking about, but it's a sure thing you're getting me confused with somebody else. Would you mind fixing my car? I want to get along. Kenny Brunner, you know for a fact... He changed a little, but not much. Knock off the games and look to the car, please. Yeah. Hey, this ain't the car you had when you left home, Kenny. Whatever happened to that car? Oh, my, this car's pretty much shot, I can tell you. Look, mister, don't put me on with that Kenny routine. All I want to know from you is whether you can fix my car enough so it'll run. Oh, you always was a kid, Kenny. Sure, I can fix your car, but not tonight. I have to get parts from the dealer. That's in Rutland. Oh. Tomorrow morning. So you'll have to put up somewhere, so... Why don't you just go on home? Shame for a young fella to stay away from home and his ma so sick. Look, mister, I know somebody else who's sick. If there was another station, I'd take my car there, but I'm stuck with you. Okay, get my car fixed. Where can I put up around here? A hotel, I mean. You plan to stay overnight in a hotel? Hmm. Well, there's only one hotel in town on Main right off Maple. You can't miss it straight down this street. Okay, thanks. Have your car for you in the morning. Say about noon. Thanks. What the nuts they breed in this town. Jenny, get me Harry Brunner. Right away, Abner. Thanks. Harry, Abner Davis, how are you, Harry? Oh, I'm how's, all right. How's the missus, Harry? Hope she's tolerable. Well, I'm afraid she's about the same, Abner. Oh, uh, Harry, I got some surprise news for you. You know who come into the station not more than a half hour ago? Harry, it's your boy, Kenny. Hello. Hello, Harry. I uh, yes, Abner, I heard you. You said Kenny. In the flesh, Harry, and he's putting up the hotel. And Harry, the strangest thing... He made out he didn't know what I was talking about when I called him by name. Say, Harry, you think maybe the boy has uh, amnesia? You read about things like that, Harry. Well, why don't you say something? I, uh, uh, much obliged. You'll let me know. Well, what are you going to do, Harry? Hello. 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 Jenny, I lost my connection. He hung up. He hung up? Well, what do you know? Hello? 
Come in. Yes? I'm uh, Harry Brunner, Kenny's father. Oh, now, look, Oh, I know uh... you're not Kenny. He, he left here five years ago, but you do look enough like him for people to make a mistake. <laughs> well, I guess it must have been a disappointment to you looking forward to seeing your son and finding a stranger. Oh, no, Mr. Robbins, no disappointment to me. I knew I could never find Kenny waiting for me, because... Kenny's dead. Oh, I'm sorry. Died two years ago. I'm sorry. But I don't understand. If if they knew he's dead, how could they think that I... Oh, they don't know. I'm the only one who knows. Well, why did you come? To satisfy your curiosity? Partly. I wanted to see how closely someone could look like my son. And I... I thought perhaps... Yes, you thought... Mr. Robbins, I'm the only one who knows Kenny is dead. Not even his mother knows. Well, how can his mother know? My wife has been ailing for a long time, Mr. Robbins, and now it's a... It's a terminal illness. Her life is numbered in weeks, perhaps in in days. And all that time... All that time she's gone on firmly believing that her son was alive. It kind of made the pain endurable. Well, how could you possibly keep up the illusion? Didn't she want to hear from him? Oh, she heard from him. I used, oh, God forgive me, I used the fact of her failing sight as the means of keeping the illusion alive. I read his letters to her. The ones you wrote? The ones I wrote. Well, it's a heartbreaker, all right, Mr. Brunner. I I feel sorry for him. Well, now you're, you're very kind. That's why I feel I can maybe talk to you, may make a deal with you. A deal? Well, that you help me for the time that's left to keep the illusion alive, bring it to life, that that you be my son. <laughs> you can't be serious. It did me, Don. Look, my my wife is bedridden, in a state between waking and sleep a great part of the time. She can, can make out shadows, but she can't distinguish anything sharply. And the voice? With her desire to see him, the, the voice will be his. But uh, all the memories, the childhood... The things shared between mother and son. I, I couldn't possibly get by, Mr. Brother. It's, no, it's, it's too far out. Oh, I can tell you things. And even there, it isn't the saying. You don't have to say much. It's her knowing that you're there. When you want to believe, Mr. Robbins, you will believe. And my wife will believe that her son is alive and home to be with his mother. She'll be able to, to die happy. I'm prepared to give everything I can to accomplish that. What do you mean, everything? Well, I wouldn't expect you to do it merely as a favor. I know you have to make a living. I know there are all kinds of things you're concerned with. I'm prepared to make it worth your while. A hundred dollars a day. A hundred dollars a day? Yeah. Well, all right, Mr. Brunner. I, I can't be the hypocrite and say I'll do it because I feel sorry for you both. I mean, I do, but as you said, Mr. Brunner, I, <laughs> I have to make a living, and I've been making a pretty poor one. So let's say it's a business proposition. Keep it clean cut that way. And I'll genuinely try to fulfill my part of the bargain. You'll keep me on the line so I don't give it away. Oh, I'll help you. Done, then. Shake on it. Hey. All right. Caddy, let's go home. Your, uh... Your ma is waiting for you. <laughs> You want a drink of water? I'm comfortable, dear. I just wanted to know you were here. <laughs> you know I'm here, Ma. These have been the happiest two weeks of my life. To have taken a leave of absence from a good job. Traveled 3,000 miles because... Because you knew it would make me happy. I, I couldn't come before you know that. Of course, Kenny. I've never blamed you for a moment. It's so wonderful how well you're doing at your job. All those letters, 
so considerate, so thoughtful. You're an executive. Your pa says you'll be a big man someday. A, a, what's the word? Tycoon? <laughs> well, maybe that's a little too thick. I always knew you'd be a success. When you were home, you were unhappy. No, I wasn't. Oh, there's no need to pretend now. I must tell you the truth. I used to be so worried about you. I said to myself, Kenny has to find himself, that's all. But at night, the sleep wouldn't come worrying. But now you've fulfilled every dream I ever had for you. It's like... like having a brand new son. What do you mean, a, a brand new son? I mean... You've been alive in my memory. I saw you, heard you, all so clear. But this, this is better. Better than anything I could remember. Are you all right? I'm tired. I think I'll sleep now. You're all right, Ma. And Kenny? Yes, Ma? Thanks. For what, Ma? For everything. There's nothing to thank. Come in again later. Of course. Uh, what's the matter, Kenny? Kenny. That's the matter, Mr. Brunner. I I can't take it anymore. But why? I don't understand. What What don't you understand? That for the first time in my life, I've been treated like a son. All of a sudden, I, I, I find it can be real, a home. Words softly spoken and meant. And in the middle of all these real things, here am I, a fake, a no, fake. Oh, no, no, you're not a fake. You've, you've done a wonderful thing to make a human being's last days happy. At a price. Don't forget that. Oh, Kenny... Jack, I made the offer of my own free will. What was wrong with you being able to use money? I've lived here in your house for the past few weeks and my eyes are open. You're not rolling in wealth either. What are you doing, Dad? Bankrupting yourself to pay me to make your wife's last days happier? Oh, my wants are provided for. I have pension. That'll see me through very well when... Well, when I'm alone... And who am I in this? Just a, an interested bystander? Raking it in while you shell it out? I always figured myself for a pretty tough cookie, but it's a little too much even for me. Think of what you're doing for her. A lie is still a lie. And the kind of person your son must have been, what I've heard about him, a decent, fine, honorable, a hero practically from what I can put together. Well, I can't measure up. I can't look at her eyes and keep on lying. I went out, Mr. Brunner. Now. All right. I, uh, I understand. Pay me what I'd earn at the kind of jobs I've been able to land. Twenty bucks a day. Figure it a hundred bucks a week. That much I need. My car's shot. I, I need one to get around. Oh, no, the original agreement, what I offered. Look, just what I asked, no more. And, um... Tell her I just got a wire. They needed me back at the job, an urgent situation. Only I, the big executive, could handle it. Uh, she'll understand. All right. And tell her I'll... I'll always remember her with love. I will. Now I'll get my things together and go. Well, how can I help you, mister? Oh, I'll get the door. No, let me. My last role is a dutiful son. Hello. Yes, did you wish to see someone, miss? I... But... You, you can't be... Kenny. Well, a fellow can change in five years, you know. It's, it's, it's been that long. Uh, come in. I don't understand. Kenny? I've been away, you know. It... It isn't real. It can't be. Well, pinch me and see. Kenny, in the flesh. What's the matter? Can't you believe it? Mr. 
Mr. Bennett told me that he was dead two years ago. Look, I... I Mr. I, I... Brenner! Why, Nancy? Mr. Brenner, what's happening? Tell me, please. I don't understand. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> don't cry, Nancy. It's just that I... I never thought you'd be back here again. I heard you were making a new life for yourself up in the capital, and I... I was glad for you. <laughs> why... Why are you here? A friend of mine phoned from town here. We keep in touch sometimes, and she told me you... Your wife is dying. I came down to see her once more, and, and that here at the door, facing, facing me, Kenny. But it can't be Kenny. <laughs> Kenny is dead, isn't he? Isn't he? You couldn't be so cruel. Uh, how could I be cruel to you, Nancy? I loved you as if you were my own daughter. <laughs> you had enough cruelty to keep you for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny is dead, Nancy, oh. two years ago. Then what terrible masquerade are you playing here? <laughs> he looks enough like him to be Kenny. But how can he fool anyone who really knew Kenny? Not just the outside, the inside. I know, but my wife failed and so on. Her sight practically gone and wanting so to believe. I think we fooled her and we made her happy. But how? Who is he, an actor? Who am I? That's a good question. Well, his name is Jack Robbins, and he was just uh, passing through. His resemblance to Kenny struck some of the folks here, and they called me, thought it was Kenny come home. Oh. The rest, well, you can grasp that. It, it's a fine thing he's done. Thank you for that, Jack. Oh, stop it, the both of you. How can I compare with him? You who both loved him, admired him. Admired? Admi oh, we both loved him. I loved him, but I never admired him. I couldn't help my feeling. Love isn't the thing you explain, but all the time. Right from the first, I knew what kind of man he was. He was nothing to admire. I'm sorry, Mr. Brunner. It's true. I know it, Nancy. My son wasn't much of a man, Jack. He was inconsiderate of others' feelings. He was selfish. He was cruel. Out from self and willing to destroy whatever was in his way. He died in a senseless brawl. Had no meaning. Just as his life had no meaning. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. I I didn't know. Well, I'm glad you know the truth now. It hurt me to see you berate yourself for, for hypocrisy. Feeling you couldn't measure up to Kenny when all the time I knew that... Well, that I'd be proud to have had you for my son. Thanks, Mr. Brunner. <laughs> you know, I almost said Dad again. It felt... Natural on my lips. Strange thing, Nancy. I've been pretending that I, I've come home, and you know, I feel that I really have. Not Kenny, but me, Jack. Come home. What are you going to do now, Jack? Uh, you got a job waiting for you someplace? Oh, nothing definite. A guy told me they're hiring at a big plant just open, and I figured I might get a chance on the production line. The job situation in Capital City is pretty good. They're putting up these big industrial parks. There should be a lot of hiring. When I go back, I, I, I can find out. It might be interesting to find out. Yes. I, I think they'll be needing me. Only not yet. Right now, I'm still needed here. Don't bother about my bags, Dad. I'll still be sleeping in my room tonight. Oh, you don't stay. Well, uh, Jack, later on, when you do go, will you, will you let me hear from you? You know, when I'm uh, alone, I'd like to feel I have a, a friend. And I'd like to feel you can call this kind of second home. Of course. I think I've found a friend, too. Nancy. Yes? Nancy, I'm sure Mrs. Brunner would like to see you and me. Would you... Of course. Come in with me and say hello to... Mother.
Theater 5 has presented The Prodigal Son, written by Max Burton and directed by Warren Somerville. In the cast, Cliff Carpenter, Ian Martin, Ethel Everett, Joan Loring, and Jackson Beck. Audio engineer, Bill Sandreuter. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York.